physics, one could say, is in a sort of a crisis in some sense because of a current gap between the sophisticated theories which came from applying sophisticated mathematics and the actual universe. So we have theories, for instance, which describe 10-dimensional worlds, 10-dimensional space-time, uh, coming from string theory and things like that. But we don't know yet how to apply it to understanding our universe. A lot of progress has been made, but it's kind of a, 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 a kind of an impasse right now. And at the same time, the, our most realistic theories, most advanced theories of the four-dimensional universe uh, are in contradiction with each other. The standard model describing the three fo known forces of nature, the electromagnetic, strong and weak, to, with great accuracy, and Einstein's relativity, which describes the fourth, called gravity. <laughs> everybody, everybody above a certain age knows that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these two theories are in contradiction at the moment. And string theory was one of the, uh, the promise of string theory was that it would unify those two. And so far it has not, has not happened. So we are kind of at a very interesting place right now. And uh, I think that new ideas perhaps are needed. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if Witten is one of those people who come up with those ideas. Well, he has been one of the one of the people that added a lot of ideas under the flag of string theory. Uh, what do you think about this theory? What do you think is beautiful about it, string theory? Well, first of all, kind of, re um, remember we talked about Pythagoreans mm -hmm. and how uh, for Pythagoreans, the whole world was this, this symphony where you have these different vibrations of all the humans. Every human is a vibration, every every animal, you know, every being, every tree, and every celestial body and so on. So string theory is kind of like that because in string theory, there is this fundamental object, which is a vibrating string. And all particles are in a sense supposed to be different modulations or vibrations of that string. So that by itself is already interesting that you kind of, describe this diversity of various particles and interactions between them using one guiding principle in some sense. But also just the mathematical things that come out of it, the, uh, the kind of, um, it, it looks like impossible to satisfy various constraints and then that is sort of like a unique way to do it. So the, that's sort of the, every time that happens when, you know, you have some system over, like overdetermined system, let's suppose, you have to do, do, do like five interviews in, in one day yeah. and you wake up in the morning and you're like, that's impossible. Because then so many things have to align. For instance, let's suppose you have to go from one place to another. Mm -hmm. So then you have a commute and then who knows, maybe there is a traffic jam and stuff like that. And now suppose that it all works seamlessly and there were like a bunch of places where it could have gone hope, hopelessly wrong mm -hmm. and it didn't. And then in the evening you're like, wow, it worked. That's beautiful, right? Yeah. That's kind of like a great luck, you know, we would say. But in science, this happens sometimes, that you have this theory which is not supposed to work because there are so many seemingly contradictory demands on it. And yet, there is a sweet spot where they balance each other. So string theory is kind of like this. The unfortunate aspect of it is that it balances itself in 10 dimensions and not in four. So maybe there is another universe somewhere <laughs> Where, but see, as a mathematician, for me, all spaces are created equal. Yeah. 10 dimensional, four dimensional. So mathematicians love string theory because it has given us so much, so much food for thought. But do you think it's a, a correct or a incorrect theory for understanding this reality? So it might be a, a theory that explains some 10th dimensional reality in some other universe, but is it potentially, what do you think are the odds? Again, financial advice, if you were to bet, what do you think are the odds that um, it gets us closer to understanding this reality? Well, in the form that it is now, that seems unlikely, but it could well be that based on these ideas with some modifications, with some essential new elements, uh, it could it could work out. So I would say right now it doesn't look so good, like from the point of view that we, of what we, from what we know. Mm -hmm. 
But maybe somebody will come and in, introduce like square root of neg uh, negative, yeah, negative one. I mean, they already introduced, but I mean kind of like as a metaphor. Yeah. Maybe somebody will come and say, what if we do this? It looks crazy. You know, uh, speaking of Niels Bohr, he had this famous quote that he said to somebody, uh, there is no doubt that your theory is crazy. The question is whether it's crazy enough <laughs> to describe reality. So that's where we are kind of, you know.